And so we are now going to move into the second round table on techniques of conservation and restoration. And I have the pleasure of welcoming Dr. Maria, Dr. Constanza Soria Biliani, who is the director of the Institute of Heritage Science at the Italian National Research Council. Um, she's a specialist of heritage material science and also of digital heritage. She's coordinated several work packages, units and projects around these different themes. And of course, she's also a very valuable member of our scientific group at the GPI Cultural Heritage. So Contonsa, can I give you the floor now, let you introduce the round table and after that the speakers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. It is uh, my great pleasure to chair the second session of this event. We are going to discuss around three projects that are named as the uh, roundtable technique for conservation and restoration. So we are dealing in an area that is within heritage science that we used to call conservation science. And this is also a very interdisciplinary area that uh, work in the border of different disciplines. Material science, to name one, but also archeology, span architecture, the development of uh, method, analytical method for uh, assessing the, the state of preservation and the effect of different type of uh, conservation methods, both material, but also technique. So the three projects that we are going to present today have a field rouge that is uh, about the understanding of the object we are dealing with and uh, also modeling of the degradation uh, path, modeling also with the uh, theoretical method, but modeling also with uh, experimental method. Then we have the development of conservation strategy that has to be tailored for the type of object and the type of degradation. Finally, the development of methods to assess the efficiency of those methods. So we are really dealing with the activity that is of paramount importance for the conservation of archaeological, architecture, and other type of artwork for the future generation. So the three projects that we are going to hear about are uh, dealing with archaeological artifacts and in general porous artifacts that are affected to crystallization of stone. The first is about pile dwelling, that are those very fascinating uh, structures that are found in lakes around Europe in the Mediterranean region. The project is, uh, has a PI Professor Manuela Romagnoli of the Department of Innovation in Biological, Agri-Food and Forest System, University of Tusha in Viterbo. Other participant to the project is the Department of Prehistory, University of Barcelona, the Arc Nuclear uh, Group Facility uh, at SIA in Grenoble, and finally, the Institute for Conservation in Italy, the very important and famous Institute for Restoration of uh, my own country. The second project is about crystallization damage at the interface of art, different type of art is uh, led by Daniel Bon Shahid Zadeh at the Faculty of Science, Van der Waals Zeeman Institute in Amsterdam, Amsterdam University. And the project is also seeing other participants as the Endhover University of Technology, the University of Bologna in Italy, and the University of Po in France. The third project we are going to hear is STARS, 
development of assessment storage methods for organic archaeological artifacts. So while the first is about C2 archaeological item, the second one is about archaeological objects with, we are going to see probably some similar uh, issues. The project is coordinated by Gilles Chamou, is a chemical engineering at the ARC uh, nuclear facility in Thea, Grenoble, France. And the consortium is also including the University of Oslo, the University of Pisa, chemistry department, and the Potsdam University of Life Science in Poland. So it is my very pleasure now to give the floor to the first speaker that is Professor Manuela Romagnoli. Manuela, you have 10 minutes for your presentation. Yes, yes. Uh, I need to, to share my screen or? Uh... Yes, sure. Okay. Πού να ξέρω, βρε, Ελένα, τι και πώς να πούμε, ξέρω. Έχω ένα παλιό σου, Ελένα. Sorry, και... I asked the others kindly What? to close the microphone so we can hear the speaker. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry. Just because I realize, okay. I can share the presentation if you like. Uh, I think to be ready. Okay. We are seeing, we are seeing perfect. You, you can okay. use the presentation mode, perfect. Please, okay. Manuela, it's your turn. Many thanks, uh, Dr. Miliani, for the presentation and also for the presentation of uh, consortium, which is a quite interdisciplinary consortium. Um, we are uh, many wood scientists we, who are involved in it, but there are also uh, colleagues uh, who are involved in uh, climate uh, analysis, uh, uh, sediment analysis, uh, and uh, environmental analysis, and of course on uh, restoration. Uh, the object are, are uh, wood pile dwellings, which are uh, well known for their historical uh, uh, landscape and uh, cultural relevance. And um, the idea of the project started because uh, uh, we know uh, many research and uh, many research and investigation uh, on pile dwellings uh, in um, sea environment or uh, alpine environment, but uh, we felt a, a gap of knowledge mainly in uh, volcanic and karstic lakes of uh, Mediterranean area. You know, um, in, uh, in uh, the case of uh, wood in, uh, in water, uh, we have uh, very specific uh, troubles of conservation and uh, restoration. It's named the waterlogged wood. And um, there is a lot of uh, variability on uh, degradation state, uh, depending uh, by the condition of the environment. Uh, especially uh, sediments and the water quality and not only. Uh, in, in the specific uh, situation of the lakes, uh, some uh, stressing uh, elements uh, for uh, wood conservation and the pile dwelling conservation are uh, exacerbated because uh, lakes are a small environment uh, and uh, so the impact of uh, climatic change and anthropogenic pressure, especially on the lakes that we selected for our uh, research are much more evident and exacerbated. Um, so the objects are wooden pile dwellings and uh, surrounding environment uh, which affect uh, conservation and also um, affect uh, the method of restoration. We selected the three case studies. Uh, two are uh, in Italy. They are the Lake of uh, Bovesena and the Mezzano Lake. Uh, uh, it's the blue uh, situation. And the one is in Spain and it is the lake of Banyol. Uh, 
Uh, in Bolsena and Mezzano, we are in a, a volcanic uh, condition, while in Vagnoli is a karst tectonic uh, uh, condition. So the main object is uh, to assess the impact of uh, climatic change and extreme climatic events on uh, conservation and safeguard of pile dwellings in Mediterranean lakes. Uh, the idea of the project started in 2017, because if you remember, it was really, uh, also if uh, the call is of 2019, because if you remember in uh, 2017, it was a very dry year, a very uh, drought uh, was uh, evident in vegetation and everywhere, a very drought uh, stressing condition. And uh, uh, the, the water level of uh, our lakes uh, uh, decreased a lot. And so um, we asked to ourselves what uh, it might be the, the condition, the effect of uh, such uh, climatic stress on conservation on wooded pile dwellings. So um, according to the main object, there are specific object. The first one is simply to uh, increase and to make a, a, an organized knowledge of the lakeside environment of volcanic and karstic tectonic lake uh, in order uh, to understand the, the implication for site and the settlement conservation. So that's the first uh, uh, important uh, uh, sub specific object. The second uh, specific object is uh, to capitalize uh, existing information. Uh, we uh, realized that there are uh, investigation in uh, our uh, case studies and in general on uh, lakes in Mediterranean area, but it is what it is named the uh, green literature. So it, it's uh, quite uh, difficult to have access and uh, to read uh, the, um, the literature which is present. So um, we would like also to capitalize and to organize the information and to establish as much as possible a network of researchers which are interested uh, to study lake environment. So um, we would like to, to study uh, the, the effect of climatic change and environmental change mainly in a daily, um, in a daily uh, scale. And uh, um, because we know that the climatic stress is uh, um, also related to the frequency of the climatic event and in general, uh, of uh, um, abrupt uh, changes in, in the environment. So um, we need to investigate uh, daily, at a daily scale as much as possible uh, what is the condition of uh, climate and the effect on water, for example, and, and the sediment. Um, we take the chance to test innovative methodologies in wood research in cultural heritage, in wood, in wood research in cultural heritage like isotopes um, or other techniques, for example, the, uh, the colleagues of France, um, they, will, they are going to test some uh, methods based on electric, electric uh, impedance. And uh, the specific object is also to, to focus uh, and, to, and uh, to switch on the, the light to, the, uh, to such kind of sometimes neglected uh, uh, cultural heritage. We are in, uh, in rural area uh, where um, it's quite important to insert uh, scientific research in uh, of historical, cultural, and environmental value in order to, yes, as first to uh, make extractive 
for a very uh, qualitative uh, tourism, but uh, also to, uh, to make uh, the people and uh, the village, uh, the policy maker, um, sensitive uh, to uh, adapt to, to use uh, preservation and uh, safeguard uh, methods for, um, uh, for uh, to preserve uh, this kind of cultural heritage, especially for the future. Uh, methodology. Uh, it's a quite an interdisciplinary project, uh, so um, there are more uh, work package also um, which uh, try to make, uh, to connect uh, environmental analysis, uh, uh, conservation analysis uh, and on wood and uh, methods of uh, restoration. Uh, the first, so the, the project is uh, uh, organized in five uh, work package. The first one is uh, capitalize information, collect everything is, uh, is available or less available on uh, our case studies and to fill the gaps of knowledge. For example, um, we need to, to make a more analysis for dendrochronology and isotopes. The second, uh, um, the second work package is uh, based on uh, the analysis of, of wood degradation in pile wellings. Um, we will use uh, very classic uh, uh, methods, uh, which are gravimetric methods, uh, which are the, the first step in order to plan the best method of conservation and restoration. But uh, we would like also to compare different uh, uh, methods of analysis uh, like uh, PC, um, GGMS, FTAR, and N NMR. Uh, all the, the data will be related also to the sediment analysis and also water analysis. Then uh, we are going uh, to, to build uh, in this month, uh, and uh, the colleagues of France have already built uh, some aquarium, which are like a sort of microcosmos in which we will try to simulate and accelerate climatic stress, especially um, water, uh, uh, temperature in water and the oxygen demand. Uh, so it's uh, like a sort of uh, aging process um, to, to see what is the effect uh, on, not only on wood, but also in changing, uh, for example, of uh, bacteria or uh, microbiological uh, population uh, uh, surrounding uh, the environment and uh, the wood uh, uh, specimens that we will uh, use for the experiment. Uh, furthermore, we have also the chance uh, to uh, study the effect of uh, post excavation assessment, because uh, in uh, Bolsena, uh, we um, sampled uh, some uh, um, wood pile dwellings uh, some years ago, more or less uh, um, nine years ago. So we have uh, now the chance to see um, if uh, there is uh, some change in, uh, in wood degradation. Uh, and we have also the chance, uh, always uh, in uh, the remnants of uh, Bolsena Lake, uh, to, um, to study also the effect of uh, restoration. Uh, because we have uh, already um, started with some uh, uh, experiment based on uh, nanomaterials, especially uh, nanocellulose and uh, lignin uh, for uh, restoration of, um, of wood, waterlogged wood. So we can, uh, we can uh, uh, see now the impact uh, if it is uh, suitable or not uh, as method of uh, restoration. Um, and then uh, we have uh, the last work package, which is dissemination and communication, which is based uh, not only on uh, uh, scientific publication, but also on uh, meetings uh, and uh, workshop with uh, local stakeholders 
in order to make them sensitive on what we are uh, on what we are doing. So you can see uh, on the right uh, the the list of uh, analysis that we are going to do or uh, to capitalize uh, according to uh, the studies of um, uh, other researcher. And uh, at the end, uh, we, uh, we, we expect some impact. Manuela, uh, yes. your, your time is ended. I okay. give you one minute to, to conclude. Yes, it's uh, the, the last one. Uh, the first impact is a, a scientific impact of cars. And uh, the second is that by the technical point of view, um, because uh, we hope to add the knowledge for restoration methods, political impact involving the citizen poli and policy makers, and then uh, we expect a cross cut impact. I must add that in our department, we have a cloud which is uh, addressed to big data collection. We are inserted in a national network. So we hope that at the end, the data of this project could be added to our cloud in order also to formulate new scenarios on the impact of the climatic change of wooden pile dwellings. More or less, it's all. And uh, I thank you for, uh, for your attention. So many thanks to Manuela. And we are now moving to the second presentation. So I give the floor to Daniel Bon Shahid Sadeh. Yes, Daniel. Yeah, it, uh, sorry, uh, it's me. It's Shahid Sadeh. Yes, I, I try to now to. to Hello. To, yes. There is, there is a mistake, I think, with the name of Daniel Bon, who is not the project leader in this. Uh, Okay, uh, sorry. I'm sorry it's, for this. It's fine. It's a colleague. It's, it doesn't matter, but it's okay. Uh, sorry. okay I'm going to share my screen. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Not yet. Not yet. No. No, not yet. This is weird. Uh, do you you have to use? I okay, think now, you now can... it's coming. It's yes, coming. it's coming. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Presentation mode. Okay, it's fine now, right? Perfect, yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Miliani, to uh, animate this round table. So my name is Nushin Shahidzadeh. So I'm professor at the University of Amsterdam and the project leader of this Christian art project. So I'm going to present our project uh, entitled Crystallization Damage at the Interfaces of Artworks with the acronym Christian Art. So, um, uh, this, uh, first of all, I would like to introduce our, my partners and colleagues that are involved in this uh, project. So um, the first country here is the Netherlands. So I start with the, the country that I'm working on. So apart myself from the University of Amsterdam, we have um, uh, as a second principal investigator, Dr. Leopel from the Technical University of Eindhoven an expert on NMR, uh, nuclear magnetic resonance uh, uh, techniques. Uh, then we have our associate partners, Isabel Garachon from the Rex Museum, and then Rosaline Weinhorst, who has started uh, her PhD on, on this project. Uh, then uh, from the Italy side, we have the group of uh, Dr. Stefano de Mir Professor Stefano de Miranda from the University of Bologna and uh, Luisa Molari, Giovanni Castellazzi, and Antonio Maria Daltri. And uh, finally, from France, we have the group of Honolor uh, Derlui from the Université de Pau, and uh, with uh, Tin Hinan Chekai, the PhD student who has started also to work uh, in this project. Uh, so this is a very uh, interdisciplinary uh, project. We have really a combination of different experts and uh, which makes it really uh, a very uh, nice and complete uh, partnership. 
So why Christine Art Project? So uh, basically, maybe you, most of you know, but one of the major cause of the degradation of the artworks is related to the salt crystallization in, uh, in these materials. And uh, if we look at uh, materials and artworks such as sculptures, uh, ceramics, uh, archaeological objects, and uh, some uh, paintings, mural paintings, we can see that um, with time and because of the interplay between salt crystallization, environmental change, temperature and relative humidity and the materials properties, we have a degradation due to the fact that salt can crystallize. And then as you can see on the left side in this uh, old Dutch tiles, we can have the shivering of the glaze at the top or here the delamination and then at the center, you can see a glazed earthenware artwork where due to the salt crystallization, uh, the object is damaged. And then uh, for some outward uh, outdoor environment uh, um, uh, cultural heritage uh, points, we can see here, for example, a mural painting, which was completely damaged due to the salt crystallization. So, um, if we look uh, more deeply to these materials, uh, we can see that um, most of these materials have a body which is a porous uh, material. This means that the material contains voids, as you can see here. So uh, fluids and liquids can invade the material and then with the change of the temperature and the relative humidity, afterwards the salt can precipitate and crystallize. In this Last years, uh, there has been uh, there have been a lot of studies about uh, salt crystallization in a simple material, a uh, porous material, uh, to understand better where exactly the salt will crystallize. For example, at the surface of the artworks, or more uh, at in the um, between the pore network. But there are not a lot of uh, studies about composite materials. And as you can see, most of these materials or these objects have a body which is a porous material, but then at the top, we can have a thin glaze or paints, which has completely another uh, physical chemical properties. Uh, so the idea of this object, as you can see here, is to understand why and how the crystal will start to uh, crystallize at the interface between these two composite layered materials and then um, in which conditions for example as you can see here on the right you can have the damage and the fractures exactly at the interface between this clay ceramic interface. Uh, the question is how the interface and the adhesion be between these materials are influencing that and for example, with respect to the properties of these composite materials, layer materials, as you can imagine, the way that the object will dry if it is wet or if uh, the, the moisture can penetrate to the object can completely change. So um, our objective with the Christine Art Project is mainly to combine theoretical numerical and experimental studies together in order to better understand how these layered materials are damaged due to salt crystallization. So by combining microscale experiments and macroscopic uh, macroscale experiments, we would like to have a better understanding of the crystallization processes, where exactly the, the location of the precipitation and in which conditions it will happen between the two materials, which will make the delamination of the glaze or the paint, et cetera. And then by using the experimental data, of course, we would like to combine this with modeling, um, micro, micro finite element modeling in order to uh, prepare um, effective predictive tools in order to uh, know better when and how this kind of damage can occur. So basically, with this objective in mind, we have three main phases in our project. The first part is to quantify the internal changes at the micro, micro scale in 2D and 3D in order to see how um, this will happen in layered materials, and then use these observations to uh, create uh, new models in order to have a better understanding of what is happening 
And then uh, in this way, we can predict macroscopic effects such as damage scenarios based on these mi microscopic processes. Then uh, the research methodology that we have um, uh, uh, yeah, proposed uh, is that uh, because we, it's really a very complementary expertise from different groups, so we combine this. So first of all, at the University of Amsterdam, uh, we are going to more focus on these microscopic and macroscopic studies of uh, uh, damage uh, due to the salt crystallization between um, layered materials. So at the one hand, we are going to use model systems in order to better under the microscope see how a porous network combined with a thin layer of paint at the surface, which has other material properties or a glaze, uh, so two type of materials will behave and where the salt will crystallize. At the same time, in parallel, we, in consultation with our uh, uh, associate partners, Rijks Museum, uh, developed uh, experiments based on antique Dutch tiles in order to better understand how these tiles having this thin glaze and a clay body uh, are affected by salt and delaminate. So this is more a 3D experiment and this is more a 2D experiment. So these results are going to be combined with uh, highly advanced uh, uh, techniques such as uh, NMR techniques in order to better see really the flow of the liquid into the material. As you can see in these pictures, we can really follow if we have two materials and a, um, an interface between these two materials, we can see from the initial state when it is wet with a certain liquid, where exactly with drying the liquid will be focused and where, for example, the salt crystallization will uh, process. And then we can combine this with high resolution X-ray tomography techniques at the Université de Pau in France in order to have a better image of uh, with respect to the initial stage of the material, where is the salt crystallization and how this salt crystallization can change the mechanical properties of the materials that we can quantify by X-ray tomography. Then all these results can be used in order to develop and um, a micro, micro, macro finite element modeling. This will be done in the uh, University of Bologna and uh, by using and based on the experimental data, then we can have a very nice prediction of what is happening based on these materials. So the Im expected impacts of the project, so uh, there is mainly three uh, uh, outcomes. Uh, first of all, the fact that we can understand better how the nano, micro, micro scale processes will lead to a macroscopic damage will permit to better understand these dynamics of salt crystallization in layered materials and when damage will occur. Then this will we use in order to develop models by really combining the data of different non-destructive imaging techniques that I uh, explained. And in order to be able to uh, develop effective predictive tools that can describe the macroscopic deterioration and then these results can be used afterwards in order to maybe uh, change or uh, better ad adapt in a better way the conservation strategies based on these predictions. Because then if we can know when and the, 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 the damage can happen and why and the location, then maybe we can uh, take other measures and wait till we have a, a complete damage scenario and then uh, make a much put much more money in order to do complete restoration of the uh, artworks. Then uh, with respect to the dissemination and communication plan, of course, uh, uh, the idea is to have a very strong uh, interaction with the conservation sciences and museum conservators. And uh, beside the fact that of course, scientific publications will, uh, will be, is uh, in plan and also um, the, the fact that we will present this in uh, conferences and website. The idea is also to organize interdisciplinary knowledge brokering event in which the Netherlands 
Institute for Conservation of Art and Science and our associate partners, Nice Museum, will play a major role on that. And the idea is to have uh, scientists with uh, conservators and also policymakers uh, in these events in order to present the results and then have a better communication and exchange together. So uh, with this respect, I would like to thank you and I'm here in order to uh, answer to any questions with respect to our project. Thank you, Nosheen. We are going to have a question at the end of the session. Yeah, thank so you. I give the floor now to the third speaker, that is uh, Gilles Chaumois. Can you hear that? Go yes. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm going to share the screen. Sure. Uh, so do you see something? It's coming. Yes, it is now ready. Thank you. Perfect. Ten yes, minutes. It's for good you. for you. So, my name is Gilles Chaumet. I am a researcher in CEA. Uh, I work in a workshop, uh, Arc Nuclear. It is a French uh, workshop. Uh, skilled in the conservation of uh, archaeological materials, especially organic ones, especially uh, leather and above all uh, wood materials. So uh, I come back on the first slide. Um, I'm going to present you the STAR project entitled the development of storage and assessment methods suited for organic archaeological artifacts. In this project, in fact, we have two different topics. The first one is a development of new storage protocols uh, to store in good condition uh, archaeological wood in wet conditions. And the second topic uh, is dealing with the assessment of archaeological artifacts yet dried after the treatment in museum. So we can illustrate these activities through the three pictures you have in this first slide. At the bottom left, you can see uh, uh, a wooden structural piece uh, contaminated by a biofilm due to uh, bacterial activity at the surface of the wood. Uh, behind, you have a large view of a Biscupin site. A uh, Biscupin site is uh, an archaeological fortified settlement in Poland from the 4th century BC, and probably it is the archaeological site involving the largest quantity of archaeological wood in Europe. And at the bottom right, to illustrate the museum activity, you can observe a Viking Age wagon found in Osberg near Oslo in Norway, dated from the mid 9th century AC. So, uh, sorry, yes, uh, some words about the two topics. Um, uh, the STAR project is uh, looking after uh, two uh, peculiar periods of the time life of archaeological uh, artifacts. The first one is a risky period between the excavation and the conservation treatment itself. So during this period, the archaeological artifacts are in a waterlogged state, and it is fully forbidden to dry uh, these uh, wooden materials because we can destroy them by collapse during the drying process. And uh, in this uh, period two, we have to avoid as far as possible uh, biological contaminations by fungi, bacteria, and so on. 
And the second period we are looking after is the museum period, so the, the longest period in which we have always uh, natural aging of organic materials. So in the projects, we intend to develop a new assessment protocol to monitor and to control uh, this uh, very uh, long, uh, long term degradation. So in these slides, we recall the main objective of the project. So we have to develop and validate a specific uh, storage protocols in uh, waterlogged states. These protocols have to be simple, efficient, and well suited for uh, archaeological uh, organic materials, especially uh, wood and leather in the project. Uh, an efficiency uh, uh, with uh, a time life uh, uh, higher than six months. And these protocols have to be well suited to, uh, to archaeological site. That is to say, uh, precarious situations. So we have to contribute to improve, to enlarge the scientific understanding of chemical and structural degradation of organic materials in water for the storage period and in air for the museum period. So we have to collect some relevant measurements and we have to study the impact of uh, uh, the degradation of the material, the impact of the treatment. And so we have to uh, perform some comparative studies to uh, observe and study the long-term degradation of organic material depending of the, of the treatment, of the initial treatment. And we have to study too the impact of the uh, climatic, uh, climatic of the environmental conditions uh, in the museum too. So we have to establish uh, uh, protocols for the assessment of the long-term degradation of organic materials in museums. And from the all topics of this uh, project, we can establish a list of recommendations, concrete recommendations for professionals in charge of archaeological collections, archaeologists, scientists, and so on. So the STAR project uh, is involving the five work package. Work package zero is the coordination and result disseminations. And we have a four work package in the projects for four uh, partners uh, for technical work package. The first one, work package one, is focused on the development of methods to store organic uh, uh, materials in humid states. So we intend to uh, test different active uh, chemicals, uh, for instance, oxidant, acid, alkali, alcohol, enzyme, salts in brine situation with very high concentrations, uh, because we have to uh, prevent any biological uh, uh, contamination of the object during this uh, storing period in a humid state. And we have to check if these active products uh, uh, doesn't foster to the degradation of the material. So it is very important to check this point. Uh, so the main part of this work uh, is taken charge by uh, Arc Nuclear in CA. Afterward, uh, after the end of this development, uh, there will be a sort of technical transfer from Grenoble to Poland. Uh, to uh, Biskupin uh, archaeological site, depending of Potsdam University. Uh, this uh, uh, scientific team has to validate the, the protocols we uh, define during work package one. 
to uh, take in charge to take charge the second topic of the of the project the assessment uh, of uh, the organic materials uh, we have to uh, test a different uh, treatments and uh, we uh, intend to uh, compare peg saturation treatment the peg is the main consolidant used by workshops to consolidate uh, degraded archaeological artifacts. We uh, uh, compare to this treatment to peg freeze drying, the alum drying used to uh, treat Osberg collections, and nuclear treatment uh, used by Art Nuclear in the past to treat some of collections. So several assessment techniques uh, will be used, uh, well suited for uh, monitoring in museum. So it's, those are simple techniques. The measurement of the pH of the surface, the DSV technique, the ultrasound velocity, dynamic vapor sorptions uh, to know the sensitiveness of the material to the humidity, the diffraction of X-rays, the infrared Raman spectroscopy, electronic microscopy, ADX. All these uh, work, all these developments of assessments uh, will be performed by the Museum of Cultural History uh, of Oslo, depending on the University of Oslo. All the sampling uh, used for the performing of work package one, work package four, and work package two. Uh, will be uh, deeply uh, characterized by advanced uh, analytic uh, techniques. This uh, work will be performed by University of Pizza, uh, an expert in the, treat in the degradation of organic materials. And the main technique used uh, uh, are the mass spectroscopy. The duration of the of the project is three years. It uh, began the 1st of October of last year, and it will end in the 30th of uh, September uh, of the year 2023. And I will finish with uh, a list of the expected impacts. So, uh, we wish to safeguard the integrity of the artifacts in storage facilities and in museums by improving the preventive conservations. We intend to secure to improve the authenticity of the objects. That is to say, we have to preserve the traces, the traces of use, the traces of shaping uh, until uh, the study by archaeometric uh, techniques uh, as far as possible. We have to improve uh, the monitoring techniques to assess the organic objects uh, degradation over time in museums. We uh, expect to, to limit the economical impact of a very risky period for the object by avoiding, avoiding as far as possible the successive uh, curative uh, interventions and uh, uh, to uh, avoid to the expensive modification of uh, climatic system in museum if uh, is uh, useless. Uh, we, we will improve to uh, our academic, scientific and technical knowledge about the long-term degradation of cultural heritage materials. And uh, we uh, will enhance the opening of the archaeological activity to the wider public uh, through uh, the degradation, the organic material degradation issue. And uh, we intend to, to promote the European cooperation in the application of common policies for the protection of cultural heritage. Uh, our projects involve four different countries in the north, in the center, in the east, in the south of the Europe, 
through Poland, Norway, uh, Italy, and France countries in the consortium of this project. Thank you. So I thank you of your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we have uh, something like 10 minutes or a little less to our discussion. And I would like to underline some common words that came out from your very interesting presentation. Interdisciplinary, of course, is the common for all the projects, variability of the composition of the objects, the problem of accelerated aging protocols, recommendation, common policy, also gray literature has been cited. So I have three questions for you that are coming from these uh, common problems that are around for these three projects. The first is about the method. So dealing with the understanding of degradation process, we have to uh, select accelerated method and we have to select materials for doing this accelerated method. This is very tricky because we may uh, decide to have a model. So materials that are more simple that those find in the real place or to use something that are coming from historical example or to have the real material to be used as a, as a uh, material to be studied. So I'm wondering the three PI has they are uh, doing for selecting the right material to have accelerated study. So maybe uh, Noshin or yeah. Manuela can uh, comment on this. Yeah, so indeed, it, this is a very good point. And uh, because, uh, yes, uh, when you change from one object to another, this can be completely different. So what we have done is that uh, at the beginning, when the project started, we had a sort of uh, gathering a meeting which was uh, explicitly written in the project that uh, in a consultation also with the Rex Museum, we will decide which type of materials we will use uh, in order to be able to have, um, first of all, uh, which type of material as a model system and which type of material as a case studies in order to be able to have the maximum information. Because for the modeling, of course, um, the, the case studies can be very complicated at the beginning in order to use to do the modeling. And so we need in parallel to the case studies to also have some model systems that we can quantify and define better in order to give the data for the modeling. So this was the way that we have chosen our um, samples and how to define. So between all partners with Rex Museum also, uh, so we decided. Yeah. So perfect. So starting from mod model and simplified material to the real case. Yeah. yeah, perfect. And what about the other dealing with the wood object? Yeah, um, we are going to, okay, we have a different aquarium which uh, simulates a different environmental condition, temperature, oxygen demand, and uh, um, wind, the effect of wind, uh, simulating uh, flows, very abrupt and strong flows. The material uh, will be small specimen taken directly from the lake, and also the sediment will be from the lake. Um, and they will be characterized before uh, put them in the aquarium. So for the material, it's a real material. But in our case, the, the real trouble is uh, the, uh, the complex, uh, the, com the, 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 the environment which is quite uh, uh, complex. And so we cannot uh, take into account the uh, biotic uh, component, of course. Uh, so fish, uh, algae, and so on. So we need to focus on uh, some specific uh, abiotic factor and then to see what it happens. I don't know, we will see maybe in the, in the next meeting, and, uh, but we had to select the variables. Thank you, thank you, Manuela. That makes very sense. So try also to simplify the several variables that are 
cause the, the degradation. And uh, what about you? So uh, about star project, uh, there is no uh, modeling activity in the project. So we use as far as possible a real uh, sampling, a true sampling. Alors for the first topic for the storage uh, protocol development, it is forcing to use a one year uh, period uh, to uh, validate the storage uh, protocols. So it's uh, uh, a long duration and I think so sufficient uh, to, to validate the, the techniques. Uh, for the second topic, Uh, so it's uh, the development of a long-term assessment of artifacts in the museum. So the degradation is yet occurred because we will use the uh, samples uh, after a long-term uh, uh, exposition in, uh, in, uh, in museum. So the problem is not uh, aging. The problem is to find a good reference uh, to compare The, the actual case, the, the actual state, uh, to the, the beginning of the state of the material just after the conservation period. So it is, uh, I think, the, the main problems we have with this second topic. Thank you. Thank you very much. So this uh, was very interesting discussion. I think it's something very important for our field to have a common approach on how to deal with the uh, the modeling of aging so that these results can be applied on the variability of the material we are dealing with. The second topic I would like to discuss with you, which I think is also very important, is data management. We are seeing as in Europe Horizon uh, project, the, the principal investigator or in general the researcher are called to have an open data policy and a data management policy. I think this is also very important for our field. We have to increase our capacity to open the research to the other researcher, but also to the society. So I'm wondering if you have some uh, part of the project that is dedicated to data organization in a fair modality. Something has been mentioned by Manuela, so I let her to start with this question. Uh, I must confess that this part we need to think uh, more uh, because uh, you know there is uh, no, like a sort of an intellectual property sometime. No? Uh, anyway, for the big data, we are going to insert the data in our cloud. I don't know how it is possible to make them available uh, on that. And um, yes, maybe data in brief, uh, which is now the new method of publication uh, in uh, scientific papers, it might be a good, uh, a good uh, chance, no? because you have uh, the, the, the you, you need to cite the, the researcher who are uh, the owner of the data. Okay, That's thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Manuela. Machine? We cannot hear you. Sorry, you have the microphone closed. Yes. So uh, we we are going also to part of it could be we will see how we will deal with it. But uh, in terms of data management, we need to to do the data fusion between all the uh, results of uh, different uh, of these high resolution techniques and. Uh, Uh, we will we will see at the end the, the part which will be really uh, important and uh, um, really let's say important in, in a way to be uh, open to the public. It, it, we will for sure we will do it in a way to be available. Okay, thank you. For start. So for star projects, uh, as you can see. Uh, the main results of the projects uh, are the development of new protocols. So we have to chair these protocols to all the professional teams in charge of, uh, of, the, of the collections. So we intend to use uh, three ways. The first one is uh, 
the participation in dedicated conference. So we have just received uh, an invitation to participate in the EconCC uh, conference uh, next year. Uh, very focused on the wet organic material conservation is a warm group. So we intend to present uh, at midterm uh, the first results of the projects in the framework of this conference. So we use we can use to the, the internet site and uh, as workshop, uh, we can uh, uh, organize training uh, uh, sessions. Uh, to, to share the, the protocols to other professional teams. Okay, thank you. I think this is very important for the future of our research area to have data of previous research. Uh, has been mentioned by Manuela during her talk about the problem of green literacy. So we have a lot of actually a lot of information that are in some paper not really accessible or even that are in the shuffle of our uh, laboratories or our uh, university or whatever. So this is going to be a sort of, I think, revolution for our field to be able to share the data and the knowledge we are producing also behind the, what is uh, directly published. I would like to mention that in the European Research Infrastructure for Heritage Science, there is a, a trial or a movement to build a DigiLab. So this is going to be a cloud, a storage for all the data that are produced in our field, linked with the EOS initiative, so linked with the data, open data and open science initiative in Europe. The final question for all you three is about impact. In a recent uh, study at ICROM, it came out that very often the research done in conservation science has have a small impact in the field. This is because what we are producing, and I put myself with you in this field, is uh, uh, very high in science, very important, but sometimes not directly acquired by the community. So I'm wondering if you have this uh, problem or how you are dealing so that all the protocols or the type of information that are coming from your three wonderful projects and are then of high impact being properly promoted in the field. So to restorer, but also to policy maker as has been mentioned before. So maybe Nushin can comment on that. Yes, so uh, as I said, uh, so uh, we are also part uh, or member of the Netherlands Institute of uh, Conservation Art and Science, NICOS here in the Netherlands. And so, uh, of course, with, uh, with this umbrella on, on our project, uh, one of the main, um, uh, let's say, goal is also to, as I said, uh, organize some events that will make that policymakers, conservators, uh, uh, people from the museum, and also the scientists will all be present, uh, maybe later at stage of our project in order to uh, share the results and also to have a better exchange and also to, to see how um, maybe we can even improve the, the project uh, till the end of the project. And uh, one of the other idea was also to be more present in this, for example, open days of the universities uh, for students or for public, let's say, in order to, uh, present the problematic and also to discuss about it and to, uh, to share information in order to, uh, yeah, propagate more the, the problem that we have in cultural heritage and why we do that and et cetera. Thank you. Thank you. Manuela. Yes. Uh, um... One of the main reasons because the project started is, uh, is because uh, 
um, especially, I, I know very well the Italian lakes, of course, are quite neglected that is a uh, cultural heritage. I don't know if you could listen in the TV, we had a rave, a rave party in the lake of Mezzano just to uh, exactly one month ago. So just to say that the, um, the, the importance, the relevance of such cultural heritage is quite uh, underestimated. So uh, now something is changing because uh, this project uh, um, is uh, a tool uh, to attract the interest and uh, to make uh, also a network for their territories, especially municipalities uh, who are in charge also for their conservation and uh, evaluation. And furthermore, uh, as far as I know, uh, there are also some uh, Italian projects uh, which are starting uh, related to tourism uh, attractive uh, also for the lakes. So I think that uh, to make uh, uh, synergy and network also with other different, uh, totally different projects, uh, maybe we could uh, uh, make people more sensitive and uh, care about, uh, about cultural heritage in lakes. All right, perfect. Gilles. So uh, about the STAR project, uh, the, the main topic is uh, the, an improvement of uh, the, the practical by professional for the, the conservation of materials. So uh, we can see in the consortiums, we are at least uh, three professional teams yet in charge of collection, of archaeological collections. So the uh, Museum of Cultural History in, uh, in, uh, of Oslo has um, the team of Biskupin of archaeological uh, uh, site and Arc Nuclear. And so we are very, uh, uh, we have to produce a very concrete, very practical uh, uh, protocol. So we, we expect we, have, we will have uh, an impact uh, in the field, very, uh, very important because uh, we we are always uh, we are yet in the field, uh, so uh, we have no uh, uh, transfer very important transfer to do between the scientific uh, aspects to the on the field uh, uh, works. Uh, perfect, Chile. So the idea of to uh, overcome this. Uh, Lackness of impact for us is for sure co-creation. So really we have to start research with an interdisciplinary group in a co-creation way from point zero and coming, going ahead with the research always with a very strong interaction between different professionals in, in the field. And uh, so I think we are almost near by the end of the session. I don't know if there are some questions from the audience, which we would like very happy to take. The, yes, there is one. I'm going to read you. It's for Christine R. No, she. I have yes. a question for the Christine Art team. Which okay. case studies yes. were okay. chosen for the project? Okay, it's, it's not a case studies in the sense of a particular place or location, but for example, we are focusing on tiles and the deterioration of uh, Dutch tiles uh, due to the salt crystallization with respect to their composition and the glaze. And uh, this is the, the, the applied case, let's say that we have taken into account in our 3D experimental studies. Thank you. Thank you, Nushin. And also we thank Julia Borghi for this question. There are other questions from the audience. No, so I would like to have one question for colleagues. Uh, I'm wondering if you are thinking also to apply non-destructive method or non-invasive method for your project in order to have a methodology that can be used for real artwork in a more affordable and sustainable way? 
non-destructive in situ maybe for some of the objects, also for Christine art? Well, uh, the, in the sense that uh, uh, NMR or um, X-ray tomography is a non-destructive techniques because you can look what is happening inside of the material and then follow with time how the dynamics is uh, the, the the liquid flow and change without really. But of course, you need sample for that, which makes it also a bit partly destructive if you want to take a sample for somebody. But there are also some. Uh, um, um, some instrument like uh, that can be used on sites based on that. So um, yes, for the moment, this is what I can tell. So um, there are a, a simplified uh, versions of some of these techniques that can be used also on objects um, instead of like using- Yeah, uh, for, for example, for NMR, it is possible to apply a, a NMR profiler that is the monitoring the decay of hydrogen at different steps inside the material. Of course, the type of information are much less yeah. uh, in but depth. I think if Leo, 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 if you are here, maybe uh, with respect to the NMR, you can uh, uh, contribute. Yes, I hope you can hear me. Um, yes, as Lucina say, we're, uh, we have a specialized NMR, so we're not only looking at hydrogen, but also at ions. And that makes that we have far more information than other people have, especially very advanced, looking into the crystallization near this interface to get information about the tiles. So I hope it gives you a little bit more information about the, the advanced NMR, which we are using. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Leo. And so I, I also take the opportunity to thank all the researchers that are behind this project and uh, that have been presented by the three PI. We have another question from the audience, Ben Gere. So I thank him for a star. Given the continuous threat of organic archaeology across Europe, heat extraction, climate change, etc. How do we need to better promote the value and fragility of organic archaeological remains to the general public? In Ireland, for example, very few organic finds from peatlands are ever conserved of or put on display. No, start, no microphone. Yes. yes. So uh, I'm not sure to understand correctly the questions. So it's an, an can, experience. Can you, can you read it? Can you read it on the chat? Uh, no. Uh, so I think I can. you can. Yes, I can read. How do we need to? So uh, uh, I'm not sure to understand the, the question. So the, the, the point is to, uh, to promote the exhibition of artifacts in a wet conditions. So by avoiding conservation treatment, drying consolidations uh, to uh, preserve as far as possible the trace, the accurate shape of the object. Uh, I think it is uh, the, the point of the questions. So it's a possibility to, to do this because it's uh, the most favorable positions is to uh, disclose the object just after the, the archeologic uh, call study. And uh, we can uh, uh, save the money to avoid some conservation treatments and we can avoid transformation of the artifacts. Uh, so, uh, but it's not very easy to, 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 to show uh, wet organic materials because these materials are very sensitive to the drying. So we can use aquarium, but for small objects, for bigger, uh, bigger ones, it's uh, more difficult. And we have to, uh, to monitor 
or the sanitary state of the water of the aquarium. So perhaps we replace uh, a problem by another one. So it's not very efficient to, uh, to, to find the, the, the good solutions to, to display these uh, archaeological materials uh, that are discovered uh, in a first state, in a wet state. So start will answer to, to the question, the results of this process yes. will uh, allow for a better exhibition of this important yes. type of material. Yes, yes, we, we can, yes, yes, it, it exists, uh, but uh, it's not very common uh, for the, the museum, actually, uh, the, the curator. Uh, prefers to uh, to show very uh, stable objects in a dry conditions. Uh, I think it's uh, more appropriate for the, the uh, for the monitoring of the collection in the museum. Uh, so uh, punctually, we can uh, if the condition is uh, is. Uh, I, is okay, we can uh, uh, display this, this object in a wet conditions, but uh, I think uh, we have to take charge this uh, position uh, in advance. Uh, so very quickly, uh, because it uh, could be very complex to do it. Thank you, thank you very much. So I think we are at the end. I leave the, the closing words to Charles uh, from the JPI, and uh, I really uh, thanks the, the three speakers, the three PIs of this very uh, exciting project, and also, as I said, all the researchers that are behind this project. And I also thank the, all the other colleagues that have been uh, following the session and also those that make uh, the question to us. So thank you again, Charles. Please. Well, thank, thank you very much, Constanza, and thank you all for having taken part in this second uh, roundtable. The, it's been very exciting, and many points and challenges have been raised, and the short discussion, I'm sorry we don't have much time for discussion, it's always the same, but uh, anyhow, uh, um, but have raised very, very interesting points. There's so a lot of expectations from these, these projects and the results of these, of these projects. Um, 